If he thinks we're settling for third, he can just forget about the pumpkin bonus. We're all familiar with using NAS network drives when we need to share files, but what about SANS? What are they? Are they faster? Are they more expensive? Are they just for dyslexics? What are the differences between the two and when does it make sense to use which one? These are all good questions I'm sure Google could help with, but around here our motto is, learn by doing. So let's go break something. So it's really common to use a NAS in your office to share files between users. Uh, we use TrueNAS in our office. TrueNAS has not only Samba sharing as a NAS, but also has iSCSI sharing, which would be a SAN. So that got us to thinking, maybe we should be using SANs instead of NASs. Let's figure this out. We're gonna bring back our TrueNAS uh, test bench from previous video where we built a crazy big uh, one terabyte stripe uh, to see how fast we could get mechanical drives going. Today we're gonna boot it up and uh, we're gonna create a test bench to see which performs better, an iSCSI initiator or a Samba Share network drive. One of the practical differences between NASs and SANs, uh, NASs are file level shares whereas a SAN is a block level share. So it's supposed to be faster and more efficient uh, when writing files. One of the key differences uh, in using it is a network drive Samba share will show up as a network drive and your SAN will actually show up as an internal disk even though it's being served over the network. To test uh, performance here, we've got our TrueNAS test bench set up. We're going to create a Samba share on it and an iSCSI target on it. And then we're going to transfer files from uh, each of those shares to a local Windows computer and back and forth. And we'll measure to see if there's file transfer uh, benefits one over the other. Okay, so within the pool now, we're going to create a data set. Now, our data set, this is for the NAS. And then we're also going to create a Z volume. Z volume is going to be for the SAN. And this is the difference where the SAN will work on the block level and the NAS will work on the file level or on the data set. Let's say 100 gigabytes. Now SANs are usually done over fiber channel, but when we're going to do them over the network, we use iSCSI. Windows has an iSCSI initiator built right in, so we should be able to connect to both the SAN and the NAS in Windows without any additional software. When we're copying files from one uh, location to another over the network, there's a big difference between copying one big file and a million tiny files. Because especially on the file level, it has to read the name of the file and then copy it over. Read the name of the file, copy it over. With a really big file, you just read the one file copy it over and then we get our full network speed on large files but when we're copying lots and lots of little files that's where I suspect we may find a big benefit by going to a SAN instead of a NAS. So we're going from an M.2 through our gigabit network to a Samba share onto an SSD. What we're copying are 30,000, 34,000 files here. So these are a ton of ton of ton of small small files. So we're gonna copy these over, then we're gonna copy a big uh, video file, and we're gonna see how fast that copies over, and then we'll try it on the SAN and see if there's a performance difference. So this is Samba Share Network Drive. We're copying 14 megabytes per second. This is what we normally experience when we're copying stuff over. Large files copy at full network speeds, Lots of small files take a lot longer because of the processing of the file transfer. So we copied just over five gigs four different times. By far the fastest transfer was copying to a network SAN share. Conversely, the slowest by a mile was copying lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of files over to a Samba share took forever. I went for a coffee break. So it's been a pretty productive day. I think we've learned a few things about NASs and SANs and that they're not just backwards from each other. Some surprising results uh, from our file transfer. I'm sure there are a lot of other features and nuances that we're not considering here, but uh, this was at least a good piece of information to start with. Uh, so there you go. If you want more information about the differences between NASs and SANs, Backblaze put out a great blog post. We'll link it in the description below. So now we know that iSCSI might be a great target to transfer to. 
now we can start considering some of the tools that we're using to transfer those files with. So next week we'll look into what tool will transfer the files best. See you next week, same bat time, same bat channel. Google cookie. <laughs> Where did I put the stuff? Oh, where, over there. Okay, there's gonna be a lot of cutting here because I don't have any of this stuff. I don't think this is the right place. <laughs> and we're gonna aim a nail them all to pen. So, ah. We done? I don't know. I think we're done. I'm done.